Welcome to another episode of Fake Chats. This is episode nine. Today, we are going to be talking about being bold and unashamed in our faith. In Romans 1 and 16, Paul declared, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Listen, in this day and time that we are living in, it's not always going to be easy, but it is so important that we make a bold stand for our faith. Here to join me in this conversation are two guests who are vocal and unapologetic about their faith. My first guest is Darina. She is a gospel rap artist and flutist. Guys, if you are not familiar with uh, Darina, you need to check her out. She has such amazing music and I am going to um, post a link to her music in the description box. She is also an actor. She has been in several plays, short films and series. She is a wife and she serves on the women's ministry at Epiphany Fellowship Church. And then for my second guest, I have Marquise Coates. He is the founder of Tools for Success, which is a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to providing mentorship and academic and professional support for youth in Philadelphia. He even has an app for, it, for his organization. He is uh, the author of two books, and he is a minister at Victory Christian Center. And I'm going to put a link in the description box uh, with all his information as well. So, Darina, Marquise, welcome. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. Yeah, doing good. Well, yeah. I am glad. Yeah, well, thank you for being here. I'm glad to have you both. So I want to start out with um, a couple of icebreaker questions, and they're still going to be, of course, centered around the theme at hand. So for my first fun icebreaker question to get us started, I want to know, is there anything that you were ashamed of growing up that you have now learned to appreciate or to be proud about? Is that me first? <laughs> I'm proud of you. Yeah, Do y'all want me to go ladies. first? <laughs> Lady, ladies first, now just play. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I, I can go first to get us started. So I okay. used to hate being referred to as an old soul when I was younger, because I was young. Like, I, I didn't want to be associated with, like, something old. But over time, I still don't, I still don't love the term, but I've learned to embrace it a little bit more. Um you know, because it's nothing wrong with being like wiser and more mature for your age. And so um, that is something that I used to hate and I've learned to embrace it a little bit more. Well, for me, I hated my name. I hated my name. What? I did. People would call me, but my name is Darina, as y'all know. But people would be like, what? Diarrhea, cha cha cha. No. <laughs> when, I was little, when I was little, like in elementary school, middle school, and then they used to be like Doritos, like nah. Cheetos, Doritos, Doritos. And I used to be like, oh, I hate my name. Well, I, my name wasn't like Sarah or Denise or something. But um, when I got older, and I, my parents were really big on the meaning of the name. And my name means our dwelling foundation. Mm -hmm. And as I got older, I was able to really embrace my name because I've never met anybody with my name. And I just started to look at it as a unique, something unique for me. Like it was just, just unique for me. And I started to like that. Like, okay, I'm not going to walk into a room and see another Darina. I mean, it's possible, but <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> So I just started to like embrace that and just started to see the good in that and embrace the meaning of the name as well. So yeah, that's mine. I love your name. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful oh, thank name. you. Thank you. Uh, so for me, I had to really, really think about this. Uh, but I, I think like when I was little, like probably when I was like prior pre-teens before I started to stretch out and get tall and, and, and skinny during that time, I used to be ashamed of my, I used to think I was chunky. So like, you know, all the, you know, like if I would play sports or be around the other guys, I didn't never want to like take my shirt off. Cause I'm like, Oh, you know, oh. I'm the little, I'm the little chunky kid. You know, I mean, you know, when you're young and guys like, Oh man, you know, I got, I got muscles. I got this. So 
it wasn't until I got older, like, you know, in middle school a little bit into high school that I started to feel like, all right, well, you know, I'm not going to be a fat little kid. I'm, I'm actually, I grew real <laughs> tall, so stretched out. But when I was younger, I definitely was like, you know, like, you know, a little ashamed of, you know, I guess my, my, I wasn't like fat, but just like, you know, I didn't feel like I was as fit as the other kids. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> I know. Right. Well, I know it's worked out for you now, right? Like the athletic build. And so it's yeah, yeah, out I got See, I, That's what I'm saying. I, you know, I was in high school, I couldn't gain weight. Then it was like, oh man, it's like when I was younger, I felt like I was, I was chunky now, you know, when I got in high school and I started playing ball and all of that. I was like, man, I couldn't put on, I couldn't put on pounds, you know, but yeah, it's changed a little bit now too during this pandemic, but I'm gonna leave that alone. Isn't it? Well, I don't know about you, D, but I, I know it's, yeah, for me as well. I'm not fat enough, trust me. <laughs> but I'm just saying, yeah, but that was funny though. Okay, so one more. So on the flip side of that, was there anything that you used to readily do growing up that you were like bold and confident doing that maybe looking back, you realize that maybe you shouldn't have been so bold or confident about it. Mm-hmm. And I can start us off again if y'all okay. want me to. <laughs> All right, so I always had like horrible handwriting. I think I was like in denial about it. So when I was in school and we would be on like the different um, like teams and, you know, needed, needed to be like a note taker. It needed to be someone to maybe, uh, sorry, maybe write like the final paper. I was always like, oh, I'll do it, y'all. <laughs> and they were like, uh, no, no, that's okay. <laughs> like, no, we don't want you to do it. Your handwriting is, is not good, Danielle. Um, and so I, I don't know. I shouldn't have been so eager to volunteer to do anything that had to do with handwriting. Even now, it's, it's, it's not good, but, you know, it is what it is. I type for a living, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, for me, it was dance. Well, me and my sisters and my best friend, we used to um, come up with choreography and dancing and uh, just kind of perform in our backyard for our neighbors. That's what, that was our thing. So I thought that I was like a great dancer and then I was a great choreographer. I am not, okay? But at the time, I don't know why, but I was like, come on, we got to get it together. We got to hit these moves. It got to be like, uh, one, two, like, I, what, who am I? I have no idea. <laughs> like thinking back, I'm like, why did they let me like <laughs> act like I knew what I was doing? When obviously all of them dance way better than me, but, um, that's that was a funny question because I thought back like why did I think I was the best dancer I right. I was not I am not I love to dance but yeah. I am to this day I'm still not the best dancer but I was going to say you have some moves I've seen you in your videos you have some moves D uh, <laughs> you, you gotta fake it funny. sometimes you gotta fake it fake it's like it's it. a groove <laughs> you <just> fake it <laughs> one two step yeah okay yes <laughs> uh, that's um I think for me uh looking back uh things that I, yeah, I, I was a talker. I used to always get in trouble for talking, man. So it's, it, you know, I'm not surprised that I'm a minister now, but uh, I used to always, you know, kind of like, you know, just always just having conversations, whether it was in class or, you know, back then when you got in trouble, you know, if it wasn't like for a fight or something, you got, when you were a kid, you got in trouble for talking. So they would call your parents or they put it on a report card with your behavior, you know what I mean? And so I would always, you know, mom like, you know, teacher told me he was talking in class again, and, you know, so that was always something that, you know, you would try to like, all right, I'm gonna chill, but I was kind of real like social, like I just always had to talk to everybody, and you know, do that kind of thing, um, you know, I did my work and all, but I just, I just had to talk, I just talked a lot in class, so I would always get in trouble for that. Yeah. Okay. That turned out to be a gift, so. Yeah, it turned right. out to be, yeah. Should have told my mom, see, I was teach your mom, you know. No, I'm just <laughs> it was preparation. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> All right. So thank you both for being willing to participate in my icebreakers. I think they're fun. I don't know if other people do, but you know, we just go with it. So we're gonna get into the conversation at hand. So before we talk about the boldness that we now have, I want to talk about the shame that we may have experienced in our past, in our past when it comes to our faith. You know, I know for me, um, when I think about reasons that I may have 
been ashamed about my faith or not so vocal about it is because of like some of the names that came along with it. I don't know if you guys got church girl, church boy, you know, like the kind of mocking that came along with it. Um, there was always also um, the accountability aspect of it. I know I wasn't always living the way that I should have been living as a Christian. And so I didn't want to be vocal about my faith because I knew that my life wasn't measuring up. And then one other thing um, that made me a little bit shame in my faith or um, to not be so bold about it is the exclusion aspect of it. You know, when you tell people that you're a Christian, they don't always, you know, want to invite you to different things. They don't want you to participate in certain conversations. They think that you're going to be judgmental. And so, um, you know, there, there was a, you know, uh, that, that being excluded out of things. And so, you know, I wasn't always so quick to, you know, put put my faith out there. So um, was there ever a point in your Christian walks where you tried to hide your faith or you just weren't so bold or vocal about it? Um, I guess for me, it would have been when I decided, okay, God, I want to live my life for you. And I like, I really want to do it this time. Like, I want to do it. And, you know, I decided that I was going to truly live a life of celibacy and be abstinent. But I didn't want to tell people like when I was first dating them, like when I was first beginning dating because I already knew like soon as I tell this person they're not going to want to talk to me no more like soon as I put it out there that this is what it is and even some Christian brothers too okay <laughs> but as soon as I put it out there they're going to be like I'm out and so that was something I had to get over and get past but yeah at first when I first like tried to like really start dating after I committed my life to Christ, uh, you know, gave my life to Christ, that was something I was trying to hide for a little bit, like, mm, maybe I shouldn't say anything, because, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I think for me, I mean, uh, I think it was just, you know, being, just being bold about my faith in general. I think, you know, in my teenage years, you know, I got saved when I was nine, but I really didn't start living like I was saved to, I was probably like 17, 18. And, and those were because there were, you know, traumatic things that happened in my life that kind of forced me to lean back on my faith. Um, and so, you know, uh, whether they were relationships, you know, whether it was, you know, um, you know, uh, the lifestyles and things that I was doing, you know, it kind of, God kind of shook me up, shook my world up. And it was the mentors that I had in my life and the people who had kind of stared me to, to kind of like give me a resurgence in my faith. Um, that made me realize like I need God, you know, and, and, and I think sometimes, you know, we get trapped in like the cool factor. So, you know, I, you know, I had that, you know, you got to have the girls, you got to, you know, you got to, you know, be the man and, and, and really, you know, who's being bold about being a Christian in high school, who's being bold about being Christian, even in college, you know, so I was trying to, you know, adapt to a new identity of actually living like a Christian, not just going to church. I was going to church all my life. But, actually live the lifestyle to say, no, I'm not going to have sex to say, I'm going to, you know, uh, you know, just be bold about my faith. And I would, and I would always admire other brothers who had come to that place in their life. Um, you know, who, where their witness became something they were unashamed about, but I was still struggling. Um, I wasn't as bold, you know, I'm gonna just be honest. I wasn't as bold because I still wanted to keep the cool keys kind of factor um, and not be like all, oh, you know, and what and preachy or, you know, and then also too, as you brought up, not to be long winded, it was the oh, no. myself, you know what I mean? So I figured if I started really being verbally, you know, and, and um, um, you know, or more, you know, verbal in my, in my faith and, and, and in my walk and, and things like that, then I would be held to a higher standard and then people would be looking at me like, you know, so then I would have to really straighten up. Um, there were like ebbs and flows in my walk with Christ. There were times when I was on fire and I was kind of really unashamed. And those are like the dire, dire straits times in my life when I, me and God were really getting close. But then there was times when I was like on a fence, like, ah, do I really, you know I mean? I don't want to go to the Christian event. I, you know, I want to, you know, so it was just kind of like that that struggle so um it you know I, I have struggled with that in the past and um and even now sometimes you know even as a minister 
um, you know, just being, you know, full transparent because you don't always want to come off, you know, we live in a culture that's very, very toxic and that sucks you in. And so you really have to be bold in like everything from what you say to how you carry yourself, you know, and so that personal time with Christ and like, you know, how you spend your life and, and that investment in yourself, because we live in a culture where we gotta be, we got to be bold, you know, so because they ain't trying to, you know, I mean, most the average person ain't trying to hear about Jesus. They ain't trying to hear about living right, not right. cutting, not doing this, you know, so, you know, it's a fine balance. So that's kind of what I struggle with. Yeah. That was so good. And see, out of curiosity, so I know you said when it came to your celibacy journey that there was maybe like some shame there because everybody may not have been um, able to respect it. Um, but I just wonder, was there any general shame? And the reason why I'm asking that is because like you used to like spit like bars about, you know, Jesus and, you know, like all this stuff. And I wonder, um, could you have had any type of shame when you were like rapping about God as, you know, in a way that you were? Um, Cause on the outside, you know, I, we would think you know, have, there's no way. <laughs> you know, you know I, I would say not during that time. Like me, I, I didn't grow up in church. My father's Muslim. I didn't become a Christian until I was, already I was in my 20s okay so I um for me once I got a grasp of who God was and I had confidence in who he was mm. like for real for me to in in my life there was no shutting me up <laughs> like I was like I'm gonna tell everybody I'm gonna do I'm gonna just tell everybody I was just like I'm going to play flute and tell people. I'm going to rap and tell people. I'm going to write poems and tell people. I'm going to do, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm going to just, I just started, like, I I know you guys know when you, like, first get saved and you just have, like, this, I'm going to yes. save the world feeling. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, such a zeal. Yeah. So, exactly. That's what I had. And so, I and then after I got into, like, artistry and everything, there was, even if I wanted to, uh, like, fall back because of what, it was almost like my, because I already put it out there and because I already, you know, it was almost as though, besides my community hold me accountable, my gift also did. So it was like, okay. Mm -hmm. You better be living what you're saying because you're how you gonna tell everybody else that God is amazing and God's got it and have faith and you know keep pushing, keep pressing forward and don't be discouraged. How are you gonna tell all these people these things? Yet you are not believing that God is going to do it. You're you're right. steadily discouraged and you're you know. So I think that that's what I, I that's what I dealt with a lot it was a struggle there for me it, it just to pull me back up it was almost like pulling myself back up like nah just, you know just keep pushing like and and just believe in the words that you're speaking and preaching to people believe and not only that just believe God like you know what I mean like yeah. ultimately because he has completely proven himself faithful to you so there's no reason for you not to so I didn't become that type of vocal until I had the kind of confidence that I needed to back it up because like you guys already know because you um you share your faith with people publicly a lot and it's like you you have to know like you know like you know because of the things like you were talking about Marquise that come along to tell you otherwise <laughs> so you must you must be able to stay firm you know what I mean yeah. Well, thank you. All right. So in order to go from shame to boldness, I believe that there is a transformation that has to take place in our lives. 
And I think about uh, Peter and John in the book of Acts, when they were like put in prison and they were told, you know, listen, we need you to stop going around talking all this Jesus stuff, okay? And Pete, what did Peter say? We are unable to stop speaking about like what we have seen and what we have heard. And it's interesting to me because like this was such a different Peter than what we had saw before. Like before he was like denying God, mm -mm, I don't know that man, nope. Sure don't. I don't know him. And now all of a sudden, even though he's being threatened, even though he's been in prison, like he refuses to back down about his faith. And so um, I, there's a transformation that has to take place in the book of Acts. It says um, that Peter was emboldened by the Holy Spirit. And so my next question is, can you talk a little bit about your journey and um, the transformation that took place in your lives to get you to a place where you maybe went from shame to being more emboldened about your faith. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Brina, you want to go? You want to hear? I, I was going to let you take that one first, but Brina said yeah. she went the last time. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Um, I think for me, um, you know, just being able to grow in my walk. Um, I think the environment, you know, I think your environment is very, very important in terms of um, just your life as a Christian. Um, because I, I believe people can be saved, but their walk can be off because of who they're connected to. And I felt like, you know, um, when you have that accountability, you have that mentorship, um, when you have friends and people, because we all, we all feel at times we don't want to live for God. Let's just keep it real, right? We all get those, you know, I mean, we just take off the mask. There are days when we don't want to feel or be saved, right? In terms of not literally in terms of the eternal work, but more or less in terms of the lifestyle. You know, we, you know, we want to cut up, we want to do whatever, and our proclivities may come out. So I think having that environment, having people that, you, that, that are in your life, even like Arena mentioned, that hold you accountable um, and that, you know, are truly believers, not just folks that's going to like be worse than you are, that's half saved or, but folks that, and, and that's a choice. You, and, and that's really how you know you're growing because you don't, you want to be around that kind of thing. Like you want to be around people who, you know, I'm not saying they got to be corny or whatever, but you want to be around people who, you know, are living bold for their, for their faith and, you know, have like a balanced life. And I can say that I've really been blessed, you know, through my pastor, through my church, um, through through just having friends who, who are balanced, you know, where we could still like, you know, talk sports and, you know, you know, whether or go to the mall or hang out or talk about relationships or whatever, but God is still the central factor. Um, and I wasn't always there, you know, I, I didn't always have that. Um, but I think life circumstances um, made me get a relationship with God for myself. Um, I think, um, you know, health scares, um, you know, um, just just God just being on your back, you know, getting involved in ministry, as Darina mentioned, you know, you are in the public eye now. So it's like, you know, in, if you live in a secret life now, you know, you feel more shame because, you know, if you get caught, it's like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, you know, you on a choir, you in a praise team, you preaching, but you, you know, you having sex on the side, you know, or you drinking or so it kind of forces you in a sense to get a, a lifestyle that matches. But I think beyond just doing it for the people, the real growth happens when um, you start to really do it for you and God, you know, yes. because you can only put on for, for so long, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, for me, it was really understanding who God was in my life, not to kind of go around, around the block with this, but just understanding who God was in my life, um, you know? growing up in a church, but just getting a real relationship, like not just going to church because your mom tell you to go, not just going to church because your grandma tell you to go, but going to church because you understand the word, going to church because you need God. And, and I would just leave it with this. I would say that the, the thing that makes you bold, and at least that made me bold, was circumstances. Circumstances made me get a relationship with God. Circumstances made me leave the, you know, leave the lifestyles alone that I knew wasn't what of God, the fornication, you know, circumstances where God was like, I'm not playing anymore. You know, like you belong to me. And, and you ain't had a wake up call till you had God really get on you about stuff. And see, when you have a purpose on your life and giftings and the things that God, he'll shake up your apple cart, you know, in a 
to, to get you where you need to be. And a lot of times that hurts, but then you start realizing that the world doesn't have a lot to offer, you know, and you start seeing like, okay, like I've been there, done that. Like, you know, it's, it's nothing in that. And you start seeing how deceptive the world is and how much in darkness the world is. And you realize like, yeah, you have a choice to do that, but you know too much. And I feel like that's what Peter, you know, when you brought that scripture, I feel like Peter, you know, not only did he get emboldened, but realizing he had been around Jesus. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he had the ultimate spiritual accountability. So even in his denial, which he did, because, you know, again, the culture, the, the influence, you know, under pressure, you know, he prophesied that he was going to deny him. But that calling, and I just thank God for still walking with us, even when we're struggling to acknowledge him. Like he doesn't let us go. Like he allows us, he allows us to develop into what he ultimately calls us to be. And like Peter was the one, you always had mouth, you know, oh, geez, I'll, I'll do it. I'll step out. On <laughs> when, it, when the test came, he was running like a scaredy cat. And, he said, right. and how many of us is like that? Like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm bold. Well, we, when we're around Jesus or we're around our Christian friends, we all bold. But the minute we get into an environment, people are like, yeah, what you really about? Then right. how does your walk? And we, and we, like Peter, we fold a lot of us. But I think yeah. that he doesn't, he understands our heart and that he prays for us and that others pray for us to get us back on course. So that's kind of really where mm -hmm. I feel like. Come on here, minister Mark. Peace. <laughs> Y'all, y'all, you know, I didn't mean to even do all of this, man. I was sitting here <laughs> like, yes. No, I didn't, I didn't mean to do all of this. That's, that's real. No, that's real because, like, I, I jotted down my little answer. But I, I, it's so funny because it's very similar to what you just said. I didn't have, like, a particular space and time in my, in my life that caused that to happen. It literally was getting to know God who he is, who, you know, what he is about and what he wants. And that is where my confidence and my um, boldness begin to come from because now I know like I know like I know. I know God, what he promised me. I know what he did for me to tell me, like, you know what I'm saying? So right. it just like just gave me that confidence I needed like and it's like I mean I didn't it's not like I knew I needed that I didn't know I needed that confidence mm -hmm. it was just it happened <laughs> it just so happened to happen in yes. relationship with him you know what I mean mm -hmm. like because you know when you know somebody and you know their personality you know their character there's nothing some, anybody else can tell you about them that you don't are you know what I mean or that or if somebody told you something false about them, you'd be like, uh uh, because I know. Or or if someone <laughs> asks you about them, you can say, This is what it is, because I know I just spent some time with him and he said this. Come on now. And so I think truly, like you put you you put it in the perfect words, in the perfect, you put it perfectly. I can't say it any better, but it truly was just having that relationship with mm. him that gave me that confidence. Mm. So good. Yeah. I love what both of you said. And I agree. It is having that relationship with God and having experiences with him. Because when we think about things that God has like delivered us from, things mm -hmm. that God has spared us from, it's like, how dare we be ashamed of a God that's been so good to us, it's been so Come merciful on. to us. And so, yeah, I definitely think it is having that relationship with God that that gives us that boldness in our faith. And we want to share it with other people to let them know, like, listen, you can have the same peace that I have. You can have the same joy. You can have the same deliverance in your life. And so, yeah, that, that relationship is uh, what I was talking about with that transformation that takes place. That's good. So, there is also a cost that comes with being vocal about our faith. Um, let's look at the three Hebrew boys, right? When they when right. He, they stood up to uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, right? They had to be the eyeballs. They um, <laughs> had to be able to stand up against like the peer pressure. And they, they had to be able to be willing to even like risk their lives for what they believed in. And so even though there is a cost that, you know, is associated with standing up for your faith. Can you just share some words of encouragement to let people know that it is still definitely worth it? 
Um, so I was talking to my husband about this and it was like, th though there is a cost, there's so much more, there's so much more of a greater gain, mm -hmm. you know, like um, he said it best. He said momentary loss is momentary loss versus eternal gain. It's like, which one will you choose? Like, will you choose that momentary loss? Cause you, you might, you might miss out on an opportunity. You might miss out on some friendships because people might, you know, you might not be their cup of tea or versus like peace that passes all understanding, like versus joy that you have no idea why you have joy in your heart. Like when everything around you is going mm -hmm. crazy versus just having just love, love, just you know what I mean? Just like oh, those things that God, only God can give you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And not only that, versus like just pleasing him, you mm -hmm. know, and being able to commune and commune with him and just having his approval of you. You know what I mean? Like versus, you know, what they going, what can they do? You know what I mean? Like God it has the ultimate say. He has the final say. And he can move mountains for us. We have freight favor. Like, no. like Come on now. You know, that momentary <laughs> loss versus favor that goes places that you can't go. It goes places before mm -hmm. you go. It meets you there. Like there's just so much to gain that those momentary losses in the big picture mean nothing. <laughs> it don't feel like it in a moment. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. the big picture of it all, it it doesn't it's it has nothing on what God got for you. It has nothing on what God has for you. Yeah. Wow. Amen. Wow. Amen. Yeah, I think um Rena's absolutely right. Um I, I think you know a lot of things came to mind when she was talking, but you know, definitely uh you know just thinking about you know the walk with Christ like you know, to live this lifestyle, you know, there is going to be some suffering. The Bible talks about that, right? There is going to be some, some suffering, but it's so funny, like, you know, we, do, we focus on the suffering a lot, but we don't focus on, you know, we don't talk about the gain as much, you know, and, and when you look throughout scripture and, you know, Paul and a lot of, you know, the apostles and others, you know, when they talked about what they were going to get, you know what I mean? When they talked about what they were going to walk into, though in the present, it's not, it's not, it's not a good thing, but, um, or it doesn't feel good, but it's just the idea that, um, you know, that there is something down the line. And I would always, and I always say this, and this is one of the things that actually made me get saved because I said, I would rather be on God's side than mm -hmm. be when I was nine years old and they was talking about hell and they was talking, I was like, listen, and I had already been coming to church, but when I gave my life under my own volition, under my own conscience, it was because I was like, I cannot be left without God. I don't want to be that person that walks, you know what I mean? When it's all said and done, that I'm without God. You know, I had been raised in the church. So sometimes we forget that early, um, that early belief as we grow in our walk, we forget that the reason why it's like any relationship. Sometimes you just, if you don't cultivate it, you kind of lose sight of really what, what, you know, how valuable it is. And, and so, you know, I just realized this over time that, you know, we win in so many ways as believers. Um, you know, there's so many blessings that are added to our life, so much favor, protection, but also too, there's joy and also suffering for Christ, mm -hmm. you know, what I mean? because, you know, God is, he's God, you know, and like, and then sometimes you got, and, and I didn't, I had to grow in my faith to this and, and I guess, you know, getting in ministry and, and teaching, but I realized, you know, it's, it's really about making God bigger. It's that, I forget that song used to be like, you know, it was a song called Bigger. I forgot who used to sing it, but it, I think it was Sean somebody. But anyway, it's called Big. God, he's bigger or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's about like how how big is God to you? Like, say we put God down to the level of humanity and situations. Like, if you're dealing with an illness, is God bigger than the illness? Mm -hmm. Dealing with you know trouble, is God bigger than the trouble? Like, if you're dealing with pain, is He bigger than the pain? Mm -hmm. you know, it's like you know realizing that we serve the big God, you know, why are we stressing over the things that we have to go through? Not that we won't face them, but we serve. And that's where I think the faith comes in. That's what makes us different from every other walking human being is because we see in the supernatural and we believe in the spiritual world. We believe in God's power where the world may just, they, you know, I'm not saying everybody. I mean, I know people have different religions, but 
we believe in a God that can take care of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so why are we tripping? So I just, so that's, that's kind of really what, what keeps me going that, you know, at, at the end, whether we're alive, whether we die, I mean, I think Paul said it, you know, whether, whether I, to live is Christ and to die is gain. So yeah. like, I'll win any, either way. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even if I'm here, you got me. If I die, you got me. So that's kind of where, you know, where it's, where it is. Yes. Amen. So in Matthew 10, 32 and 33, it says, whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father, which is in heaven. And I have this, um, this study Bible by, um, Tony Evans that I absolutely love. And I love what he said about it. He said that we are not here to be some type of secret agent Christians, but we are supposed to be a vocal and visible uh, disciple for Christ. And so I definitely just want to encourage anyone who may be dealing with some type of shame. Um, listen, we got to let our light so shine before men. Like there, there is no point in us. Well, I don't want to say there's no point in us being saved, but if nobody is going to be able to see our light you know, then then what is the purpose of us being saved to, to a certain degree? You know what I mean? We're trying to reflect God and bring them to Christ. And so um, before we close out, I just want to give you guys a chance if there are any last words that you want to say just about uh, being bold and, and unashamed about our faith. Um, the floor is yours. Yeah, I would say that your, your, your light, as you mentioned, your light that Christ gives us as being saved is such a valuable thing. Like it, it is super valuable. Number one, because we're dealing with an eternal God. Yeah. And, you know, my pastor has been doing a series on the afterlife and we've seen it throughout this, this whole pandemic. And we've seen people have been checking out left and right. I mean, it's been, it's been, you know, God rest their souls, but it makes you wonder, okay, you know, <laughs> what happens to me after I die? You know, life is short. You know, so I don't have a lot of time to be messing around. And so if I'm going to live in sin or, or, or disobey God, is it really worth it? So as a believer, we got a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do and we have to be more bold. Then, you know, we have to, I mean, all of us, we have to be more bold. And, and I don't mean like, you know, preaching everybody every five minutes because God gives us wisdom and, and, and we got a jobs and we have to deal with the natural world. I'm not talking about, yeah. you know, undisciplined people. But, but we shouldn't, when those, when those feelings of like, I got to speak the gospel to this person rise up, yeah. go for that. You know, yeah. that's, that's our ministry, you know, and that's where that light is, you know, and all of us, and I've been guilty of not saying things, oh, you know, they don't need to hear that, or I don't want to come off like this, yeah. but this is this person's soul. Yes. You know? And, um, and it's not any goodness of our own. Like this thing that we have, this gift is not because we perfect, yo, <laughs> it's not this yeah. gift this is God's gift, yeah. and, you know, and so we just, I just feel like we just have to constantly share it and, um, and be, you know, um, unashamed of it. Yeah, yeah, so good, yeah. I agree. Um, I think um, that what, um, also, I think sometimes when you're in uh, so many Christian circles or when you just around a lot of believers, you may not realize how many people don't know God mm. or don't know that he loves them. Mm. Don't know, you know, mm. how much he cares for them. And I think that it's important for us to, to not think that people take, take for granted that people know already that people might already um, understand that about God, that there's literally nothing that they can do to cause him not to love them. I think that simple truth, like people just really don't even know the simple truths about God. Like, um, and I think that, you know, we just can't, can't take advantage of that and can't take advantage of the fact that we might be the only people that will let them know that, mm -hmm. that we might be the only people that, um, like Marquis said, that will be able to share the gospel with that person that once you have that feeling that oh maybe I should share it man right, you right. know because like you said I've totally been guilty of it but um but just allowing God to give you that boldness too because sometimes I think you might feel like you don't naturally have it or you know mm -hmm. you, you might just be afraid you might be nervous 
but asking God and asking the Holy Spirit in those moments to just give you the words to say or to help you start that conversation or create that opportunity for you. He will mm. do it. He will do it so that so that you can go ahead and, and let your light shine like like uh, Danielle and Marquis said. Amen. Yes. That was so good. Thank you both for sharing. So, all right. So this has been another episode of Faith Chats. I pray that you all enjoyed the conversation and was inspired by it. Until the next time, God bless you. Thank you.